Hey guys, Brett Weiss here. Thanks for tuning in. Uh, so you've probably seen on social media, news sites or whatever, that Microsoft has announced the name of their forthcoming console that will, will be released in the holidays of 2020. It is the Xbox Series X. Now they also showed the console design, which is sort of a monolith, and it appears to be sort of uh, just in some, from some of the reports like a PC gaming device, which I guess makes sense since it is by Microsoft. Now the name is odd, Xbox Series X. That's not really one, a name that somebody uh, could have predicted. To me, it sort of sounds like a British television series since they call their seasons series instead of seasons. And, um, or it maybe sounds like a car, a Series X. That's just, it's kind of an odd name, which sort of fits in with Xbox. Now the original Xbox is kind of a cool name, uh, even though people were calling it the Sex Box or had some different nicknames. Anyway, it worked, the Xbox 360 made sense. Xbox, Xbox 360, Atari, Atari 2600, whatever, sort of something we gamers could relate to. Um, but then the Xbox uh, One X, the Xbox One X One, I mean, just weird names. Um, it it kind of got confusing, several iterations of the Xbox there. Uh, I personally, um, just to talk a little bit about my um, history with the Xbox, you know, with, with this new announcement, which was made on the Game Awards uh, just recently. I wanted to talk a little bit about my history with the Xbox. Now, the original Xbox came out uh, in 2001 uh, in the US. And like, as usual, I didn't get one right away because again, I've got um, you know uh, plenty of older games to keep me busy. Uh, with rare occasions, I, I picked up a Wii uh, just a few months after, or weeks after it came out because it was really exciting. And I played it over at my brother-in-law and my sister's house. And, um, you know, I love bowling and tennis so much that we, we rushed out to get one. Couldn't find one right away, but uh, we went to several GameStops and finally found one. And the price was, you know, it was, uh, it was still at launch, you know, basically, you know, a very new system, pretty much at launch, you know, just a few weeks later. Uh, but I did get one of those right away, but that's, that's a rarity. Um, you know, and it wasn't a super expensive console when it came out. Um, but it's a rarity for me to be an early adopter and, you know, I never pre-order systems or anything like that. I usually wait till they've been out a while uh, to either where, um, you know, there's a price drop or a special edition console. Uh, with the Xbox, original Xbox, I didn't get mine until 2004 when they came out with the Halo Special Edition. I really liked it with the, you know, sort of translucent green, a really neat design. And uh, by that point, I thought, okay, I need to get an Xbox. And there were some games I was really wanting to play. And, um... So yeah, I really liked, uh, I like themed consoles anyway. Uh, as you can see, my Xbox 360, I didn't get one of those until the Star Wars uh, themed edition, which was really neat. And uh, you know, I like the Star Wars sounds it makes. I like the uh, R2-D2 design. And I really like the uh, C-3PO controller. It's really smooth. I like the gold um, uh, look of it and just the smooth design. It's, it's, it's really neat. And so, you know, like I said, a lot of times I'll wait on, on new systems till a price drop or a themed console. Really love the theme consoles. So let me talk a little bit about the Xbox, the original Xbox. I was kind of, I almost said the Xbox One, but that gets things really confusing. The OG Xbox, uh, some of my favorite games for the title, for the system. Now, I've never been a huge fan of first-person shooters. Um, I do I do have some background with them, though. I did like uh, the original Doom when it came out. That was a lot of fun. It was pretty intuitive, and it was new and interesting. And it wasn't the first first-person first shooter but it was really groundbreaking and it, it did influence, you know, most, most all of the uh, first person shooters that came out after that. It obviously popularized the genre. And today, you know, the first person shooters are probably the most ubiquitous genre there is. And, uh, but I do have some, you know, I liked Doom and uh, I liked Dark Forces and I used to play Dark Forces. That was a Star Wars themed first person shooter. And I used to play that for our Macintosh that was back in my computer at our old house on, you know, in our, when I would, you know, I would have been writing for a very long time. And at our old house, um, I wrote on a Mac and that's what I used for gaming some as well. And we did have Dark Forces for that. It was a really neat Star Wars themed first person shooter. So I had a lot of fun with that one. And, uh, but my favorite first person shooters of all time are Halo and Halo 2 uh, for the Xbox. Just fantastic games. And I like to call these the first person shooters for people who don't like first person shooters. Now they're obviously great for people that like first person shooters, but they're very accessible. The controls are smooth. I just love the way they play, great graphics, great storyline and voice effects. But even if you're not a huge fan of first person shooters, you may get some enjoyment out of those. So 
big fan of those games. So let me talk about a few more, uh, a few other uh, original Xbox games that I like. Ninja Gaiden Black. Some people say Ninja Gaiden, whatever the case. Ninja Gaiden Black, uh, sort of an advanced, you know, th third person 3D hack and slash, uh, modernized iter uh, iteration, reimagining, if you will, of the old uh, Ninja Gaiden game for the NES. Just a great, beautiful game. Hardcore hack and slash. Uh, when it comes to modern genres, my favorite is the third person 3D hack and slash which, you know, especially on the PS2 with Maximo and God, God of War, which I've mentioned before, and uh, the Shinobi remake on the PlayStation 2. I love that game a lot as well. Big fan of the third-person 3D hack and slash, so and Ninja Gaiden Black is one of the better examples of those. So, uh, let's see. One of my favorite racing games of all time, and maybe even my favorite, you know, OG Xbox game of all time, is Sega's OutRun 2. Just a phenomenal racing game. It gives you a great sense of progression. I was a big fan of the original OutRun back in the arcades. And with uh, OutRun 2, you get, um, it, like I said, you get a great sense of level, pro le level progression. And it really takes great advantage of the home console format by giving you awards. And, and it's just a fantastic game with great graphics, excellent controls. You really go fast. The steering works well. Just a fantastic game. Tons of fun, it's just all about fun. It's not some kind of, you know, real serious um, simulation racing title. It is a very arcade style, you know, as its roots uh, would, would dictate. Fantastic game. And uh, moving along, Midway Arcade Treasures 2. Now, what I like about this is it has Wizard of War, which is one of the greatest uh, two-player games of all time. And it's got a bunch of excellent, um, Arcade ports on it, Mortal Kombat 2 and 3, Gauntlet 2, Spy Hunter 2, and on and on. So that's a really fantastic collection of games. I also like the Tecmo collection of games because it has Pleiades, which uh, is the sequel to um, Phoenix, one of, my great, one of the greatest shooters of all time. And uh, so Pleiades was kind of an obscure uh, arcade game, which was the uh, sequel to the much more well-known Phoenix. And that is on the Tecmo collection for the Xbox. Now... Can't talk about the original Xbox without talking about Buffy the Vampire Slayer and Buffy the Vampire Slayer Chaos Bleeds. Now, the original Buffy was a Xbox exclusive, as you can see, only on Xbox. Love the cover. Love me some Sarah Michelle Gellar. And I was a huge fan of the Buffy the Vampire Slayer TV series. And this game, you know, does it justice to a degree. It's not a great game, but it is very good. It's sort of an adventure uh, combat game, you know, with some... Punching and kicking, obviously, some vampire slaying, some vampire staking. It's a lot of fun, and it's got some adventure elements, you know, some exploration that makes it fun. Anyway, any Buffy fan should own these games for the Xbox. And I'm a massive fan of The House of the Dead 3. Now, all the way, you know, going all the way back to the uh, NES with the Zapper Gun, I've been a big fan of light uh, gun games. And The House of Dead 3 is one of the better ones. Um, it's gory, it's gruesome, it's action-packed, it's fast-paced. Uh, there's tons of weapons and just lots of monster mayhem. Really enjoy this. It's a lot of fun. See some of the, you know, screen images there. Really neat game for the Xbox. Anyway, so yeah, I spent my fair, fair share of time with the Xbox. And just recently, I've been playing some Xbox 360. As I mentioned, I didn't get one until the Star Wars edition came out. That was a must-own. You know, I was a big Star Wars fan. I have been enjoying the Mandalorian, Mandalorian series, by the way. Very cool. Well done, Disney. Uh, but anyway, so with the Xbox 360, um, I've been playing some Simpsons, the game, which is sort of a Grand Theft Auto uh, game, but with far less, you know, cop beating up, far less hooker killing. But it's sort of an open world game like that, a sandbox game set in the um, Simpsons universe. It's a little more linear than the Grand Theft Auto games, but it is a ton of fun. I've really been enjoying that a lot. It's got some light puzzling, uh, some punch, you know, some combat. It's, it's really neat. It's been a lot of fun, and it's got a lot of humor as well. Anyway, so that's my, you know, a little bit of my history with the original Xbox and some of my first impressions of the name Xbox Series X for the forthcoming Xbox console, which will be here in time for the holidays of 2020. And um, now, once again, they've come out with a really strange name for their console. So let me know in the comments below, what do you think of the name Xbox Series X? And I'm sure you've seen the monolithic design by now. Sort of looks like a PC gaming device. Let me know what you think of the design and just your thoughts on the Xbox in general. Leave those in the comments below. Thank you so much for watching the channel. 
Thank you for subscribing. Uh, thank you for hitting that like button. I really appreciate it. And if you want to turn on those notifications where you'll be alerted to every time uh, I put out a new episode next week, uh, next Tuesday will be the new Tales from a Retro Gamer episode. Thank you so much for checking out the show. I will talk to you guys later. Peace out.